Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a new product and it's the Kakute F4 all-in-one flight controller. This is the V2. It's the complete combo. Uh, many of you have been requesting it and uh, here it is. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to do a quick overview over everything. And then we're going to be doing the ESC testing and the flight controller. Hopefully all in one video. Uh, we'll see how this goes on. So as you can see here, it comes in a package like this. What it is is a VTX, which is completely programmable through the Betaflight OSD, which is awesome. It's pretty nice. It's stackable. So let's put this guy to the side. So here is the F4 all-in-one flight controller V2. So let's go ahead and open this here and let's just take a look. So usually it would be right here and um, it's right here because I've been testing it. So we're just going to take a look at everything else that it comes with. I haven't taken anything apart so we can see this all together. So as you can see here, they give us some nice nylon standoffs. That's very nice of them. And they give us almost every single wire we need, which is pretty nice to give you, except the next C60 connector. They don't give you that. You have to bring that on yourself. So take that into consideration when purchasing this. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of, we have three colored small wires, small gauge wires here. And why would they give us three? Well, because the ESCs have telemetry and the all-in-one flight controller has pads for the telemetry to make it easy to install, which is absolutely awesome. When I saw this, I was very happy and very excited. So as you can see here, they give you all the wires you're gonna need and they are all silicone, so that's a huge plus. So let's put this to the side and let's go down to the bottom layer. So right here, we're greeted with four ESCs. Now these are BLHeli32 ESCs and they have nice weight to them. So they're not gonna be on the light side. And you, as you can see here, they have a huge array of capacitors. So hopefully that's gonna be good in testing. I have not tested these just yet. As you can tell, they're still brand new. They do have a current resistor, so that's pretty awesome. And LEDs and all that kind of stuff. We're gonna leave these for a separate video, I think, uh, when we do just the ESC testing right now. So right now, let's just put this back to the side. So this is how the combo would come. It's pretty nice, well packaged, um, and um, seems pretty good. I mean, from the packaging perspective. So let's go ahead and take a look at the flight controller now. All right. So there's a couple things that I really like, and there's a couple things that I really don't like. Up the first thing that I truly dislike is how the gyro is mounted. Now it's nice. I mean, it's good, but in my kind of area, you know, when the temperature drops below. I don't know, zero degrees Celsius. I think this tape is going to have some heart, some problems, really. I could be wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. But um, yeah, that's one thing. But another thing what they've done is actually they did better than what AirBot did here is with AirBot, they had this coming off the right here, which is terrible because, um, you know, it just has more risk of getting damaged. However, here, what they've done with the ribbon is they kept it towards the camera, which rarely anything really comes in that area. So you should be good to go in that end. However, you know, this is not my kind of thing. I really don't like this. Some of you are going to love this. So you really don't have to soft mount the board. You just stick it in and you're good to go. So that's going to be pretty cool for some. And uh, we are going to be testing this because um, I do love all of flight controllers and I really want to see how this stacks up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pads here. So as you can see, we do have a current sensor right there. So that's always nice. That's always good to see. However, we, the our ESCs do have, the well, at least with the package, they also have current sensors. So we will be able to read current off the ESCs. So that's also going to be pretty cool. So taking a look at it here, we have the arrow up front. So it would be installed in your quadcopter like so. Now let's go ahead and take a look on this side here. So there's a couple little features that I really, really like here. So as you can see, we have ground pad, LED, 5 volt. So this would power up your... Uh, your LEDs here, and this would be your signal for your LED, and these would be the power for your LEDs here. So that's all good and done. And I believe this is the buzzer minus here. So uh, this is kind of strange because the buzzer minus here and the buzzer positive is all the way up in this corner right there. But it doesn't matter because the buzzers are controlled through the negative uh, part. So once this activates, then it activates the buzzer. So you could you also power up the buzzer right there if you didn't want to use your LEDs. It also works. So that, that'll be good in that perspective. Now let's go ahead and check the orientation stuff. So as you can see, we have our battery pads in the back here. So I really like it that way. Some people might not, but I prefer it this way. So you could always rotate it, but you know, that's up to you here. So the battery pads are in the back. So that's always a huge plus. And as you can see, we have the pads for the ESCs. They're pretty well sized, which is good. And um, it's always nice to have. However, as you can see here, we have two, two little tiny, tiny, tiny pads 
or holes we should say we have the rx5 and we have the signal for the motor so what, what it is is here's m1 and here's rx5 um what this is here as you can see if you take a look at every single one you'll see rx5 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 now on this board the rx5 the uart5 is uninverted so it'll be able to read the ese's telemetry so this is going to be pretty cool and it makes for a nice setup if you wanted ese telemetry and it should be the perfect setup here so that's that's really awesome however they don't apply they don't give you ground you don't have to ground your ese's but theoretically it's better to ground your ese's and you can always just run the ground to here so you can wrap around with the power the esc ground power and just solder them together and you're good to go that also works so the orientation as you can see is correct motor one two three and four that's perfect beta flight and they all have rx fives so that's a huge plus so serial tele uh, esc telemetry would be on uart5 if you were to enable that now let's go ahead and take a look at this side. This side is going to be a little bit difficult here because I have already started solder. So as you can see here, we have the buzzer uh, positive, which is also just a five volt. Next to it is another five volt here. You like for, for example, I powered off my camera from here. So as you can see here, so we have this five volt. That's where I powered off my camera. And this ground here, this yellow line, this is video in also for camera. And this is ground for camera. So that's what I did here. And if you take a look here, we have video out. In ground, I grounded the VTX from here and I took the video out from here and I stuck it the positive to the VTX from one of the ESC pads. However, you know, you could you could put that anywhere you want really. You'd even put it here because uh, this VTX does not take 5 volt and this all on flight controller does not have any other voltage regulator but a 5 volt and a 3.3 .3 for spectrum uh, receivers. All right, so let's move down a little bit. As you can see here, we have SDA and SCL. Now these are, you know, your I, I squared C ports here where you could put peripherals such as a GPS or whatever you want, you can do that right there. And if we start looking down here, we're gonna have, I believe yeah, RX6, TX6, and then we're gonna have R4, and then T4, which is your R4, and we have R3 and T3. Now, if you were gonna connect the S bus to this board, you would wanna go to R3 here. Why R3? Well, I3 has automatic S bus inversion, so you don't have to play around with anything else. So if you do have an S bus, you know, receiver, I would highly recommend, or well, this is the only place where it's really gonna work without doing any modification. So this is where you wanna connect the, uh, your S bus receiver to the R3 port. All right, so now we have SP and we have five volt. So obviously five volt is five volt. SP is smart port and it is inverted, which is this pad right there. Um, it is inverted, so you don't have to play around with any uninverting tricks. You just put your smart port telemetry wire right there and enable smart port on UART1. So SP is for smart port, and it's on UART1 here, and it's already inverted for you. So you don't have to uninvert it, so that's always a huge plus. So this board is actually pretty well thought through. Um, that's, that's very good. I really like to see this, and uh, I just can't wait to see how it performs. So let's go ahead and go down one more. We have 3.3 volt and a ground. This would be for anything that's running, any receiver running 3.3 volt, such as the Spectrum, or all that kind of crazy good stuff. So let's take a look at the board now. So obviously we're running an MPU 6000 gyro, which is the good gyro, this is the gyro you want to see, and it's soft mounted um, via this tape thingy, and they think they do provide you with two extras, so in case this tape thing gets ruined, you can also um, replace it basically. So take that into consideration, which is... You know, it's, I mean, it's good. I've never used these type of boards, so I'm going to be very, it's going to be very interesting, actually. So as you can see, we do have current sensing. So that's a huge plus. That's, that's a big plus, actually. So that's good to see. And our boot button's right there. If you ever brick it, you just hold it and then stick in the USB and let go. And then you go ahead and flash it. So uh, that's always nice. And if we take a look back here, I think this is a barometer. So they do give us a barometer. So barometer is for altitude hold, uh, which, you know, it works great with G once you put a GPS also. So it really helps the quadcopter, you know, stay in the correct altitude you want it. And I believe you'd have to flash like clean flight or something. I've never tried it on beta flight or clean flight, so I really can't say much. Now for OSD, here's the OSD. The OSD, they're actually using the Max chip and not the, um, the AT something one. So I don't know how this one's going to be good compared to the other one. Um, if it's going to be more sensitive than the, the other one we're used to. 
but um, it's going to be pretty interesting. And I ha actually I have been testing it quite a bit. Um, I'm still not done testing, but so far it's been holding up very nice. And um, it looks like it's going to be a winner. However, I've just started incorporating the voltage spikes into my testing just to get a perfect circuit down. And um, I'm just still working on that. I was hoping to have it done by today, but still needs more time. So, yeah. But so far, you know, this one is testing good, but I will have that video up coming later on. And, well, that's really it for this flight controller. I mean, it's pretty nice. And, um, I mean, that's all I could really say just about the layout and the overview. It looks like it's pretty good built. I, I mean, I can't really complain about anything. And uh, next, we're going to be doing stress testing on this guy, as well as testing the whole setup for noise on some noisy motors. So what I will do is I'll connect one ESC to the all-in-one here, and I'll connect it to my bench and my oscilloscope. And we're just going to thrash it and see what's going to happen. And then we'll remove the ESC and then just do my simulated noise attacks on this board and see how well he copes and see if he's good or not. And then we'll do the real testing. So I think that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.